Hi there, it's Beauty Junkie. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to get into foundations from low end to high end. I have about five foundations to show you. So let's get started. So before I begin, I want to give you an update on my eyebrows and eyelashes. I've started using some enhancing serums um, starting on the 1st of June and today is June 11th. Um, so not too long. Um, I don't think my brows are much different. I've been using the Rapid Brow Serum and I haven't noticed too much of as far as like filling in the sparseness yet, um, but it's supposed to take two months for this guy. And then for my lashes, I cannot really tell a difference yet. Um, I've also started this on June 1st and I've been using the new lash serum and this is supposed to see results um, within 30 days so it's been about a week and a half yeah I don't see a lot of difference but I don't see any negative side effects I haven't had any stinging or my eyelids aren't darkening or anything like that so that's good um, but yeah just want to give you a little update um, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my eyebrows, my eye makeup, and concealer, and then we're going to do some foundation tests. Alright guys, so I put on my eyebrows, did a little simple makeup look, I used the Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette, I used all the colors, I used my new Pat McGrath Fetishize Mascara. And the concealer I used is the Skin Fetish Sublime Pat McGrath Concealer in Light 6. That's the yellow you can see under my eyes. I only put it under my eyes. I didn't put it anywhere else on my face because we're doing a foundation video. And I really wanted you to see the true look of the foundations. Yeah, and I also used the Charlotte Tilbury eyeliner that I got. This is the Maroon Dual Ended eyeliner. I just used the um, metallic shade. Um, I think it looks good on top of eyeshadow. I used this underneath my eye by itself and it made me a little bit sick because of how red toned it is. Um, but I think it looks fine, you know, over eyeshadow. I did notice that it is a little bit tricky to apply. It applies like smooth when you swatch it on your hand, but when you're applying it over eyeshadow it does drag a bit so um, it's it's because I think it's a harder formula it's not a a coal liner so it's not super soft um, so just a note on the eyeliner all right so I think I I put on primer I put on the Tatcha liquid silk canvas primer and I put no powders on my face I didn't set my concealer because I know I'd put foundation over it and so I have five, five foundations to try and I think what I have decided to do is I'm going to kind of go in areas and apply a different foundation each area. So I'm going to apply two different ones up here, one here, one here, one here, and we're just going to kind of go halfway in on the cheeks. And we're just going to section it off that way. Um, I am going to look a little crazy because I know not all the tones match perfectly, but I just kind of wanted you to get a feel of what these different foundations feel like and they are not all like the same sort of coverage. Some of them are going to be light coverage, some medium, some a little more heavy. So that's going to be interesting too. Um, and then yeah, I'm supposed to go to the grocery store later and so I'm going to look a little crazy but that's okay, I don't mind. Alright, so what I'm trying out today. Now these are just in my collection, I've tried them many times before, but I wanted you guys to get a sense of what these foundations like. I'm sure if you want you can search and find videos on all of these by themselves, but I kind of just wanted to do like a semi comparison on all of these on my face. So we're going to start out with the CC creams first. I have the Eborian and the Shantakai. This is the Just Skin have an alabaster and then the CC cream in Aborian I have it in Claire which is the lightest one and these are a light coverage I think this one's a little bit heavier but I'm gonna put the Aborian one on this side and Chantecaille on this side and 
then we're gonna go around the face this way. I'm gonna do, let's see, we're gonna do the air flash on the cheek, the Shiseido Synchro Skin on the chin, and then the Elf Flawless Finish Foundation on the other cheek. So that's kind of the order we're gonna go, because I, I know there's a lot of videos on this, and while my chin area is probably the most problematic area, I want to show these foundations off a little bit more so they're going to take up a larger area. So let's start with the CC Cream. This is the Aborian. So this one is kind of a rub-in formula so you can't use a sponge to apply it and you really have to rub it in to get the color because it's one of those white color tone formulas. Um, so I'm just going to apply it straight on my face, not how I normally do it, but because we're getting a really concentrated area, I think this will be easy. So you can see when I spread it, it turns to the skin tone. And it's just a really light, comfortable foundation. I use this probably most days of the week when I am wearing makeup. Not these days, but when I was. Um, so that's pretty much it. This is probably one of the easiest foundations you'll ever need. It's not a lot of blending. Um, at the same time, there's not a lot of coverage. It's really natural. Gives you a little bit of coverage. And so let's go to the Shantakai one. This is the Just Skin. This one offers a bit more coverage. I'm just gonna do my best to blend it in with my fingers. So you can see how much more coverage you're getting with that one, but this one is pricier. But the formula is a bit more concentrated, but I will say it has less SPF than the Aborian one. So if you're concerned about that, that is something to consider. I think because it has more coverage, it requires more blending, so it's not quite as fast to apply. But it is really pretty, relatively easy. I mean, I'm using my hands. You can certainly use a sponge. I have in the past. I think that is pretty enough. All right, so let's do the Air Flash. So this is the Air Flash Dior Spray Foundation. It's been around for a while. It's water resistant. It claims 12 hours of wear. Don't know about that, but I use this for special occasions, mostly weddings, um, just because for me, um, this is an expensive foundation, but also it takes longer to apply because you're spraying it and it's very messy and I don't like really the spray applicator because I'm putting it on a sponge anyway. I'm not spraying it directly on my face. I don't know how anyone does that. It's very messy. But I do like the finish, it's really pretty. Um, this is in the shade 104. There's 70 milliliters, 2.3 fluid ounces, but remember there's a lot of air in here. Um, but this has at lasted me a while because I don't use it daily. Um, special occasions, I think this is a good option to have in your kit. So let's go ahead. So the older, more I've held on to this, um, it definitely comes out chunky over time, so it's not spraying as fine as it used to. Um, I'm going to clean off the cap, see if that helps. But yeah, last time I used this, it came out very chunky, so I'm just going to spray it on my sponge. Not as chunky this time, so that's what it looks like. Kind of like a pure spray painting. Um, so that's probably a lot for, <laughs> I forgot, this is just going to be on one cheek. 
Um, I'm going to dab a little bit off because it's probably going to be too much, but here we go. What I like about this um, foundation, the Air Flash, it's just really easy with a sponge. I don't know how else you would blend it out. You probably could use your fingers or a brush, but it's pretty flawless with a sponge. So I'm just gonna go halfway onto my nose as best as I can. Yeah, it is so pretty. It gives like a nice medium coverage, but I mean it looks like a full coverage because I don't, I'm not seeing any blemishes. Um, it's just really, really pretty, really pretty finish. Yeah, I'm glad I kind of um, took off some of the excess because I don't, I don't need any more than that. I just wish it wasn't in the spray form, but I don't know, maybe because it's so thin when it comes out on your, you know, when you spray it out, maybe that thinner consistency helps make it look like this. I don't know. Maybe it's part of the magic, is what I'm trying to say. I would just be aware if you are doing your makeup yourself that you aren't fully dressed because the spray does kind of go everywhere. And it's like little micro spots and I get them on my vanity and probably on my shirt. Um, so kind of be aware of that. It is a super messy one. Alright, so I think I said Shiseido on the chin. This is the Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Oil-Free Foundation SPF 30. This is in Porcelain 140. Um, I always forget to shake this one. So I'm going to put this on my glass palette so you can see it. And I'm just going to do one pump because we're doing such a small area. But that is what it's like. It's um, liquidy. So you can see that there. I most of the time I apply foundations, liquid foundations like this with a sponge. Even the spray one of course. Um, if I have a doing a sheer CC, then I'll use my hands, but most of the time I like to use a sponge. And the sponge has been a real game changer for me. Everything looks so much more flawless and smoother. It's insane. So this is the chin. And if you guys want to see a full face of any of these foundations just on their own, let me know. I think this one's a tad more yellow than the Dior one. I like the finish on this one too. It gives a good amount of coverage. I use the whole thing pretty much. I could get a little bit more, but I don't think I need it. I'm just doing some extra blending. The chin is a tricky area for me because I do a lot of bending right here. So the foundation can really wear off quickly. Plus eating, touching your face, everything sort of wears off right here, especially. I think it looks um, pretty good. It looks a little bit more matte than this one. This one's a little bit more dewy. Still a nice um, finish. No, can you guys tell that these are different foundations? Yeah, maybe. Maybe this one looks like it has a little bit more coverage. On to the last foundation. We're doing the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. This is an oil-free satin finish. This is the color beige, which is light with cool pink undertones. And yeah, I don't have much else to say about it. 
So this formula, I never thought I would like this. I think I ordered a bunch of stuff from e.l.f. to get free shipping or something like that. I needed to do a minimum spend. So I decided to pick up this guy and it really surprised me. I really like it. Um, I really like the finish it leaves on my skin. Um, and this color looks really dark, right? And somehow it works. So this is just kind of a magic formula. It's inexpensive. Um, I recommend it. So we're just gonna do one pump there for my last cheek area. And this guy is thick. So you can see it is not running down at all. It is not liquidy. So it's that kind of foundation. Um, I wouldn't say it's like particularly super high coverage even though it's thick. Um, all it says is fly of small, a small amount starting at the center of the face, blend outwards. Layer as needed for more coverage. I think it gives a good amount of coverage. This is probably, could be too much for this cheek, but we're gonna try it out. We're gonna use the sponge, the clean side. Let's get to it. So you can see I have a bit of pinkness here that I wanna cover up. And I'm just kinda of tapping. can tell I have like no cover, very minimal coverage on my forehead because this looks a lot lighter than up here and a little bit yellow. At least some less light. So I know I'm kind of blending into the chin a little bit but so there's going to be a little bit of overlap. to apply a little bit more around the nose. I just get so cakey around my nose. All right, I'm gonna pick up the last of the foundation on my palette. So I think it looks pretty good, but it wasn't as easy to apply as the Dior Air Flash. And it's a little bit I don't know, matter. It's not like I think satin matte is probably it's a satin finish. I think this is more of a satin finish, but it's not bad. I think my redness, you know, went away for the most part. Um, I just had a little bit of a, a tricky time with my nose on this side. I mean, but otherwise I think all these foundations look pretty good. You know, of course, it's hard to compare this lower half with the top half because the coverage on these is just not there. But I don't think it looks that noticeable far away and once I put powder on, I don't think it's going to be too bad. I just might look a little bit red on my forehead. So I'm just going to blend out the neck. Oh, I haven't worn this much of coverage in a long time. Yeah, I think all of these look great. I think I think the best side for me is the air flash side. It just, everything looks a lot more flawless and I like a little bit of that dew. Whereas this one is satin, but it's not as glowing. I don't know, and I don't mind my chin. I think it's well covered. It's a little more flat matte. And then my forehead just looks very natural. Just a slight bit amount of redness, but I don't mind it. Um, I want to do this video because I think, you know, although like all of the textures that I showed you are slightly different, they apply, you know, differently. They come out of the bottle differently. Um, some you have to rub in with your fingers. Um, but for the most part, you can use a sponge. Um, but I just want to say, like, you, there's so many videos on foundations, 
and even though like you know a lot of people may agree oh this foundation works great I think it, it's still such a personal thing and foundations work differently on different people on different days of the week so on Monday I could do this face and I could prefer one of these other foundations over this one which I think is my favorite and then on Friday I could think the elf one looks the best <laughs> Um, there's just a lot of factors in here, you know, what primer you use plays a role, how much moisturizer you use, how much did you use, um, you know, is it dry in the air, is it more humid, I think all of that sort of comes into play, um, you know, I, it's just very personal and I think, you know, we should give ourselves a break on like what the best foundations are because it really can differ even within ourselves from day to day. Um, that's just kind of my thoughts on that and I think it's it's pretty funny when I watch all these foundations videos like, oh that's the best foundation and it's going to be the best for everyone, you know. I don't know about that. I think am I definitely swayed by people's opinions if a large amount of people don't like a foundation? Sure. I think that's the key though that you watch a lot of different people with different skin tones and different skin types and if everyone hates a foundation it's probably one you should stay away from but you should listen to why you know oh they don't like the coverage well if you're not into high coverage and that's what it is and people don't like the coverage or they say you know it's, it's more medium to sheer and you're okay with that then you may not hate it so I don't know, just use your common sense as to whether or not you should try a foundation. I was hoping Pat McGrath's foundations were going to be better, but after everyone kind of admitted that like, oh, it's very light, you have to apply it with your hands, for me that like, that's not the foundation that I want to buy because I don't like using my hands as much, especially if it's a, you know, a foundation that's supposed to be sort of medium coverage. I'd rather use a sponge, where if it's a light coverage, I can just easily rub it in easily and be done and not have to worry about blending as much. So that's why I decided not to try it, but if I got a sample, would I try it? Sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is like the final foundation look. I'm going to continue my face and um, just sort of give you my final thought. So I'm going to use the Laura Mercier translucent, translucent finishing powder all over my face. And then under my eyes I'm going to use the Pat McGrath under eye powder. And now I'm going to put on some bronzer, blush, highlighter, and some finishing powders. So I'm going to do the Hourglass Mood Light Ambient Lighting Powder sort of all over. So I'm going to use for bronzer the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in Terra. So now we're going to do some blush. And I'm going to use the Hourglass Mood Exposure Blush. Alright, and then we're going to do some highlighting, my favorite part. I'm going to use one that I haven't used in a while. This is the Wander Beauty Wander's Glow After Hours. So I'm going to do my lips real quick and then we're going to reevaluate the situation. So I'm going to do a bit of a deeper lip liner with the Sephora Collection Rouge Gel Lip Liner in Rosewood. Now we're going to do the MAC uh, Lux Trance lip Lipstick in Realness. We're going to use the Fenty Gloss Balm in Fussy. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. So now we're going to reevaluate. After everything's all said and done, our makeup's complete, let's look at the foundation. Um, yeah, I'd say, like, this still looks like it has less coverage on this side. I'm noticing above my brow, there's not a lot there, whereas this side definitely could have blended out better. Um, I'm noticing just more product. 
Um, I think it's just, I don't know, like I think it's easier to under apply with this because of the formula. So if you're an over applier, this might be a good option for you. Um, also, it could be that I was trying to avoid the eyebrow area since it was already done, whereas usually I wouldn't mind getting really close to the eyebrow, so that could be a factor as well. But even so, I think even up here, this looks like it has more coverage than this side. But even though this doesn't have coverage, there's no complaints about it. Like. I think this does what it's supposed to do and just kind of smooth and perfect and blur blemishes a little bit and redness but it's not going to overpower your skin. This guy is really beautiful. I, I love both of these. This one's more expensive and less SPF. That's a big downside for me. Um, but I don't mind the way it looks. It's just compared to the rest of the face. I think there is a bit of a difference. I don't know if you can see it, but it is there. And then for, let's see, the air flash. I think this side looks the most polished, smooth, and perfected. But in comparison to like the chin and this cheek, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not sure there's a huge difference <laughs> like noticeable difference especially if you ask somebody else you know like hey which part of my face looks the smoothest could someone really answer that I'm not sure I think the chin is a lot more matte looking I think if you really wanted to truly test all these you put them all over the face and then compare side by side, but that's really tricky to do, like comparing photographs. So I just wanted to do it all on one face. Um, I think the e.l.f. one is probably the weakest of these, you know, three The we're comparing like the standard sort of foundations. I think the e.l.f. one is probably the weakest. But for the price, it's still pretty dang good, even though it's like not up to par with like these other expensive foundations, I think it, I mean, from far away, you're not going to be able to tell. And even close up, like, I have more blemishes on this side, so that's probably not helping. But I just had a little bit more of a challenge applying. So now with everything on my face, um, I don't think the powders really disturbed the foundation underneath. Like, I'm not noticing much coverage lifted. So I think with any of them, so I think that that's a good thing. That's a positive. No matter where you go with any of these options, I don't think powders are going to disturb them too much. I do recommend, like, don't dig into your face when you're blending or applying. Like, be gentle. Just kind of skim your face that can affect the foundation underneath and concealer. I think that's pretty much all I can say for now. I'm gonna continue on with the rest of my day and we're gonna check in later and just kind of tell you where things are at. A bit of a wear test. Um, I of course like these. I know I like these foundations. They're in my collection. These aren't new things. But if you guys were considering any of these options, I think it's good for you to kind of know my observations. And I know not any of these are like super perfect. We're always on the hunt for the next perfect foundation. But I think these are really nice. And even the e.l.f. one is pretty nice. I mean, I can't complain. Um, just so you know, it will probably it'll be a lot darker. Um, so that's kind of gonna affect how you're going to be able to see my skin. Um, but I think you'll get a good idea. I'll have a good idea like what oils have come through and what sort of moved around. All right, so I'll see you in a bit.
All right, guys, I am checking in. Um, it's about 10.30 at night. And when I first applied, it was about like 4 o'clock-ish, 3, 4 o'clock. So it's been a few hours. Um, I haven't touched up my face at all. I haven't mattified it. So it's pretty shiny right now. And this is pretty typical for me after several hours of wear for makeup. Um, I get a little greasy, a little shiny, um, so this is pretty normal for me, and I, I mean, no matter the foundation, um, this is what happens, and it's normal. Um, but I think overall, like, looking in the mirror up close, things look pretty good. Um, you know, despite the shine, I mean, it, it doesn't look too cakey or terrible, at least in my opinion. Um, I think for some reason on this side, this is the e.l.f. foundation side, things look a little bit shinier for some reason, and I don't know why. Um, it looks just like the oil kind of broke through more. Um, my chin looks shiny, um, but it doesn't look bad. Like, I tried to avoid touching my face, and I was pretty busy at the grocery store, and um, doing things after that, so I think my forehead looks fine, um, I think things have kind of settled in my fine lines a little bit. I say under my eyes I'm looking a little bit dry, but I think if I ever wrinkle or smile things just kind of get stuck in there, but I think, yeah, overall I think the air flash still looks really good. Um, I mean, I really can't complain about any area of my face. I think all these foundations do a really nice job, even after several hours. Um, if you don't like shine, I think this is going to change on a daily basis. So even though the side isn't shiny today, um, tomorrow if I were to do a whole face of air flash, I mean, it's likely that my face will be just as shiny as this, um, and maybe shiny like this side, I don't know. Um, but I think overall things look fine no matter what you use. Um, if you notice any areas that you think are just too shiny for you, then maybe none of these foundations will work. Maybe you need something really more full coverage and more matte finish. You'd probably also need to apply more of a heavy duty or heavy duty setting powder or just more powder. Um, that might be the solution for you. Otherwise, I think you just have to touch up. Um, you know, mattifying paper, you know, sheets could work or you could just soak it up with a Kleenex or just apply more powder on top of this, which I don't recommend, but I know some people do that. Um, overall, I think it looks like a natural sheen. I mean, I can't really complain. I think it looks pretty good. I think if I, I didn't eat anything really, so I think if I did and I touched my face, things kind of would be more disturbed. Uh, but I think it's the key is to keep your hands off your face and that sort of helps. I didn't wear sunglasses so that kind of prevented any kind of lines from for forming and disturbing the foundation as well so that probably helped. But overall I think things look pretty good. No complaints here. Yeah, I just think so. it, it it just really depends on your preference, how much oil you can handle. Um, it is sort of warmer out and that doesn't help. If it was cooler, it probably wouldn't have quite as much shine, but generally as my face heats up, I get sort of a sheen. And it's not as noticeable if I don't have any makeup on, but when I do put on foundation, it certainly is noticeable, especially right in here. So, it's just reflective, people notice it, but it is what it is. Um, if you have oily skin, you know what I'm talking about. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have any foundations that you feel like are really last a long time and you don't get the shiny? Please let me know. I prefer not to have super high coverage or super matte foundations, but if you find them one that works for you that you don't get the shiny, let me know. 
All right, guys, that's it for the check-in. All right, guys, I forgot to film the end, so thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.